All right, so today we're going to do more recognizing functions and function families. So we're going to start off with some vocabulary. And uh, luckily for you guys, this is fewer words, but this time we're going to be writing basic equations, okay? Um, so please follow along and copy this down onto a piece of paper, or if you already printed this out, that's great. Copy it there. So linear functions have functions of this form f of x, remember that just means a function, is equal to ax plus b. And then I want you to say where a and b are real numbers. And you're probably thinking, what in the world is a real number? As far as you know right now, that's just a plain old number. So all the numbers that you know are real numbers. And there is such a thing as an imaginary number, but we're not there yet, so don't worry about it. When we just say A and B are real numbers, it just means they're numbers, okay? And also, just so you know, linear functions look like this. So if you have your x and y axis, linear functions can be completely flat. Or if you have your x and y axis, Linear functions can be increasing. So they go up towards the right and down towards the left. Or linear functions can go like this, decreasing. Go down towards the right, up towards the left. So all of those are linear functions. Okay. All right, let's write exponential functions. I'm just going to switch colors so that when I draw the graphs for the exponential functions, you'll know that these are exponential function graphs, okay? So these functions have the form fx is equal to a multiplied by b to the power of x. So the x is in the top right corner. And then plus c. And then this is where a, b, and c are, you guessed it, real numbers. And also, b is greater than 0, and b is not equal to 1. So you see how I wrote an equal symbol and then I cross it out? That literally means not equal. So b is not equal to 1. Okay, and so what do these graphs look like? There's four ways that they can look like. Here's your x, y axis. Your exponential function can start off looking flat and then go up. Or your exponential function can start up and go flat. Or your exponential function can go up and start flat like that, or end flat like that. Or one more, they can be flat and go down like that. Okay, so there's always a flat portion and then there's an a portion that either increases or decreases. So that's what exponential functions look like. Let's write our next definition. I'm going to switch colors. Once again, I'm switching colors so that you know which graphs are linear absolute value because I'm going to do them all in the same color. So these have the form f of x is equal to a, that's an absolute value symbol. It's not a one, it's a bar, okay? It's like a tall bar. x plus b and another tall bar, and then plus c. And this is where a, b, and c are real numbers. And a is not equal to 0. Remember, not equal to, cross it out. So write the equal sign, cross it out. Okay, and so these graphs, they end up looking like, let me draw it over here. Here's your x and y axis. They either look like a v or an upside down v. Okay? Let me draw the arrows on the end. So these are linear absolute value functions. 
Okay, let's do quadratic functions. Quadratic functions have this form, f of x. Remember, f of x is just the way you write a function. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And you guessed it, where a, b, and c are real numbers. And also, a is not equal to zero. Okay, and so for these graphs, what do they look like? Let me draw them off to the side. They're gonna look like a curvy U, okay? Like that. Either points upwards or downwards. So these are your quadratic functions. And our last definition, I'm going to write in yellow. This one doesn't have a specific formula, okay? But I'll show you what it will look something like. It will look like f of x is equal to, and then it's going to have a curly bracket. You remember the curly bracket when we were listing numbers? And then it's going to have an equation on top. I'll just call it a1x plus b1. So it's one linear on top, and maybe another linear on the bottom, and it can have many, many linear functions. So it could go on, there could be more and more, okay? But I'm just gonna write two. So it looks like that with the curly bracket, only on one side. So that's, if you see that, then you know it is a linear piecewise function. And it might have other stuff around it, just for now, know that this is what linear piecewise looks like. So let me write the words. It includes functions that have equation changes. For different parts of the domain. Okay, so for different parts of the domain, uh, your linear piecewise function will have different pieces of linear functions. What that means is it's literally like you take pieces of lines and you just put them all together. So let me give you an example. Let's put your x and y axis like this. Let's say I first want an increasing linear function, and then I want a decreasing linear function, and then I want a constant linear function, and then I want a another linear function, and then I want a constant again. This has so many different pieces of lines, right? Here's a line, here's a line, Here's a line. So it is a linear piecewise because each piece is a line. Linear means line. So it's made of a bunch of pieces of lines all put together. Now it can look like that or it can literally just look like this. It can be two pieces. It can be five pieces. It can be 10 pieces. It just depends. Okay. So linear piecewise functions, it's pieces of lines put together into one. Okay, so those are our definitions. Um, let me give you guys a little bit of time to write it because I know I write fast as a human being since I am 10 years older than you at least. Okay, so if you haven't finished writing it now, it's okay. Remember that uh, the video will be posted later on on the website anyways, so you can always find it there. So I'll just scroll a little bit. Let's do uh, examples one, two, and three together. So let's read the directions. Determine whether each graph represents a linear function, a quadratic function, or an exponential function, a linear absolute value function, or a linear piecewise function. So we're gonna see which type is it. All right, so let's take a look at number one and I'm gonna highlight it. It starts off flat and then it goes up. 
So there's only one type of graph that is curvy, starts off flat, and then increases, and that should be the exponential function. So remember, in all these graphs that I drew, they're flat and then increase. It actually looks just like this first one, except theirs is a little taller. Um, or it can be decreasing and then flat, increasing then flat, or decreasing, I mean flat and then decreasing. But either way, there's always a flat portion and it's curvy, okay? No sharp corners, very smooth. So we're going to write exponential. Oopsies. There we go. <laughs> Okay, and then look at number two. Number two is just one straight line, and it just goes bottom, I mean, top to bottom, goes downwards. The only one that is a straight line is linear, because the word line is literally in the word linear. Look how I highlighted it, line, A-R. So linear functions are just lines. So that's what this one is. This is a linear function. Okay, now take a look at that last one, and I want you to notice that here's one piece of a line, here's another piece of a line, and here's another piece of a line. So think to yourself and think, what is this function? It's made of different pieces of different lines. All right, hopefully you are saying linear piecewise, because linear piecewise literally means lines and pieces, pieces of lines all put together. So this is a linear piecewise function. Okay, and that's it for these examples. I want you guys to try to identify the rest of these problems on your own, and then we'll get back together. Oh, for number 10, I know it's a lot of dots, right? But here's how I want you to think of it. If you connect the dots, then which type does it look like? Okay, so that's how you think of it. Yes, I know there are a bunch of dots. It just means this is a discrete, not continuous graph, but it still fits one of the types in the top. So when you trace it, which shape does it follow? Does it follow linear, exponential, linear, absolute value, quadratic, or linear piecewise? So you can answer that for yourself, okay?